Gary Simon of Corsetro, and today we're continuing on with the 100% free course, which is developing Ethereum smart contracts for beginners. All right, so if you're just landing on this on YouTube or my site or Udemy uh, without watching the first three videos that are part of this series, make sure you do that first. Otherwise, you might have a difficult time understanding. All right, so in this tutorial or this lesson, we're gonna be discussing what Solidity events are in smart contracts. All right, so in simple terms, the purpose of an event is to provide JavaScript callbacks in a user interface, and this allows you to execute code based on whether or not these events were successful, and you can also pass from the contract values that you can then use in your JavaScript. All right, so, in our example, we had the Corsetro contract where you can set the instructor's name and age, and then when a user uh, sets it in the user interface, nothing happened really. You had to just go up to the browser and refresh it. Well, that's not very user-friendly. So that's kind of what the purpose of events are for. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, first, we're gonna take a look at the current contract. So I'm gonna switch over to my browser. And this is what we have going here. Again, if you're just landing here, this is gonna be confusing. So I would really suggest watching uh, from the beginning of this course. All right, so the way you define the smart contract event is just underneath our UIT or unsigned integer age, we're going to put in event and then the name of the event, very simple stuff. So we'll just say instructor. All right, so we're gonna pass in here the string name and an unsigned integer of age. So the purpose of this event here is now that we created it, we need to call it. So we're gonna go down to function set instructor and then inside of here, we reference the name of the event and then we're going to pass in those two values. So the first value would be F name and then underscore age. All right, so that once this set instructor function gets called from our web user interface, then it's going to reference this event of instructor and it's gonna set the new first name and then age. And in our JavaScript, we're going to call this. Okay, so what we wanna do now is update the actual user interface. So let's go ahead and momentarily, we will come back to this to recreate uh, the contract and, and get the ABI and all that stuff. So let's go ahead to our editor. And this is what we have going so far. By the way, let's just show what the current user interface looks like. So for instance, if we set a new name of like Jerry, who's 87 years old, update instructor, nothing happens, not very user-friendly. We refresh, however, and we'll see it did update. So our goal is to make it so that once the update instructor is clicked, it's gonna show a little loading graphic and that loading graphic will only disappear once we had a successful callback, all right? So what we'll do now is go back here. And the first thing we wanna do is right here, we see we have, I'm gonna increase this so we can see everything a little bit better. We have our get instructor method. We don't need this anymore. We're gonna use the event. So we're going to delete that. And inside of here, we're just gonna put a var instructor event. So we're creating a new variable and we're gonna bind it to Corsetro dot instructor, which is the name of the event. Okay. Next, we're going to reference instructor event and we're gonna use the watch method and pass in a callback function, which takes in error and a result. All right, now we're gonna say if the error is absent, then we're going to use jQuery here to show a, or hide rather, a loader graphic so this is on success. So once we have a successful response, then we'll hide a lower graphic. And then also instructor, 
we're going to say result args dot name. So over here, if we go back, we'll see that we have our name and age. This is a part of the response that gets returned as a part of result. So let's continue on here. We're going to put a parentheses, which will also hold the result args age. All right, and then we'll put years old, just like that. We'll put else if there was an error for whatever reason. We'll also hide this. By the way, let's get rid of that. And then also console log the error. All right, so that's simple enough. Uh, hopefully you can understand that being that hopefully you already do know some basic uh, JavaScript. And by the way, we had an error right there. Okay. All right, great. So now being that we're referencing this loader ID, that doesn't exist. So we want to make sure uh, that that exists, obviously. So let's go up here. And really, you can put this anywhere you want. Um, this, this course really isn't about effective user interface design. So this is, wouldn't be the best uh, method in terms of placing a loader graphic somewhere in, a, in our user interface. But I'm just going to put one right here. And so all it is is just an image, image ID of loader and a source right here. And this is just a, um, a double ring spinner.gif uh, from loading.io. All right. So let's save that and go to main.css. And we'll reference that to hide it initially because we don't obviously want to show it by default. So loader, we'll just make a width 100 pixels and then display none. All right. Now, before any of this will work, like I mentioned before, we have to go back to our smart contract. We're going to redeploy it. So let me uh, bring this over. I'm going to hide this first one. We're going to create... There we go. Uh, we're gonna go back to compile, go to details, copy our interface ABI. Now, again, if you're just hopping in in this course at this lesson without watching the previous stuff, this may be confusing, but I cover what the, all this stuff is. So you want, might wanna watch that. So that ABI, we're gonna go back to our uh, code editor here. We're gonna paste it into the contract right here. This is our interface. And then also we have a new transaction. So let me give me a, come back here to run and then copy right there the transaction address. All right. Also make sure uh, that you are running the Ethereum JS test RPC that's currently running. And also make sure that it's also up here in Web3 provider. Okay. Now, assuming you have set all that up correctly, and hopefully I did too during the context of this course, we're going to go back here. I'm going to refresh. We can see there's no current name because we just redeployed the contract. So let's go ahead and set one. And that loader graphic should show up right here. So let's make it my name, Gary, age 34. Ha, 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 ha. There's always something wrong. Oh, yep, that's right. I needed to add it down here. We actually need to show it once the button is clicked. All right, loader.show. All right, let's try that again real quick. Refresh. We'll make it Joe. And this will be age 81. Update. There we go. And there we go. Awesome stuff. So it works. Let's try it again. And you'll see sometimes it takes, uh, sometimes it's quicker and sometimes it's not. And you'll find that once we're on the, the Robston test environment, it will take actually quite a bit longer, sometimes like a minute, two, three, for it to actually show. Um, and then also pretty much the same thing on the live Ethereum network. And so we're going to be doing that as well, a little bit future, a little bit more in the future in this course. Okay, so hopefully uh, now you understand how to connect events to your web user interface with the help of Web3 API and the test RPC and Remix IDE. 
All right, so in the next lesson, we're gonna continue on by jumping back into Solidity and learning more about smart contract development. I'll see you then.